Hi everybody and welcome to week two and this week we're going to be focusing on how you can show up and help people find you and making this process a new habit. So let's get going. So the first thing I want to look at is where are you? And some advice that I've been given is to be a rock star on one platform. So if you're new to this and new to social media, we recommend that you choose one platform, whether that's Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, to really, really focus on. If this is not brand new to you and you're already using social media quite a bit, you might still choose to be a rock star on one platform and choose another platform that you're developing your presence and your skills around using. So where will you find people who relate to your focus? Sometimes the platform that you could use is really obvious. So if you remember last week, we were talking about what focus you want to explore. And I explained that one of the areas I was looking at is whether I wanted my focus to be on developing my skills around sketchnoting. If I'd chosen that one, Instagram would have been the obvious platform of choice because of its very, very visual nature. So it may be, if you think about your focus, that there's a platform that really jumps out as the obvious one. And for other of us, that might not be quite so obvious. And I'm choosing LinkedIn and Twitter for mine. So one of the ways that we can help people find you is using hashtags. And these are simply words or phrases that people who share the same interest as you are using. And for me, because my focus is self-managed teams and health and care, I eventually ended up with two that I wanted to explore, self-management and teal. And teal is the collective word to describe the three breakthroughs of teal, which is next stage organizations, which is bring your whole self to work, self-management and focus on purpose. So I wanted to make it clear to people that I was also really interested in the three elements, um, even if um, I particularly wanted to use the hashtag self-management. So here's how on Twitter you can think about and test out different, self uh, different hashtags. So if you go to the left hand side, uh, in the Twitter um, search function, I typed in self-management and used the has hashtag label there. Nobody was tweeting about self-management in the time that I was doing that earlier this morning, but it gave me examples of the groups who were also using that. So the next thing I did, if you look in the middle, is use Teal. And again, there's some people tweeting about um, Teal Live. So there's obviously some event happening. I don't know what Teal Over means, and I don't know what the last one is. Um, and it then gave me a list of people whose surnames is, are connected with Teal, or their first names, right up to Teal Ioni. And then I wondered whether people were using self-management as a hashtag with the hyphen. So I typed that in, and again, it gave me um, different groups, self-management UK. Now my hashtag is a bit confusing because self-management is also used about a community that's thinking about health and self-care. So I needed to make a judgment about whether I still wanted to use self-management or whether because there was some confusion to use something else. But in the end, I decided to keep going with self-management without the hashtag and with teal. So again, in the search function, if you can see along the, the top line there, you can look at the top tweets connected to your hashtag, the latest tweets connected to your hashtag, the people who are using it, photos and videos. So when I put in people, because I'd recently changed my um, description of myself on Twitter, I turn up as one of the people there, as does Matthew Bell and the several others there. And of course, these are people that you want to start following in relation to your hashtag. And it also gave me some of the top tweets like Tough Leadership who are using that hashtag regularly. And then if you go to the middle and the latest, you'll see that Sarah Clark is currently tweeting about self-management and some other people too. And then if you go to the right hand side, again, it lists the people who are tweeting around your hashtag. So this is really easy ways to start thinking about who you want to follow in relation to your hashtag. So that's the first thing to do today is to decide on your hashtag, see who's using that hashtag um, as people you might want to follow. So the other thing that I encourage you to do 
is then to use your hashtag in the way that you're describing yourselves in your bios. So on the left is the bio or the profile that I was using at the beginning of our work together. So I had a photo that doesn't obviously relate to self-management at all. In fact, it's got nothing to do with self-management. It's um, the coaches that I'm part of with Alt MBA. And you'll notice that I wasn't using the hashtag self-management either. I was using the hashtag next stage radicals. So last week I changed that. So I made sure I'm including my hashtag teal and my hashtag self-management. I'm making it much more explicit that my interest is self-management in health and care. So actually writing those in. So obviously there are a few things that I needed to lose given the word count in your Twitter profiles. So uh, I had to change visiting professor, professor of digital solutions to just visiting prof, but I don't think I actually lost anything by doing that. The other thing that I did is change the image at the top and I wanted to go super, super explicit and make it really obvious what I'm focusing on. And I might just use that for the first six weeks or I might continue to use that. But I created an image um, where clearly I'm saying self-management in health and care is what I'm interested in. Now, if you want to create a similar image, this is the free app that I use called Word Swag. Um, so you can just download that. There's a number of free photos or backgrounds you could use, including the one that I used. And it helps you find exactly the right size for Twitter profile. So if you want to do something similar, that's what I recommend. So because I'm focusing on both Twitter and LinkedIn, I then went over to my LinkedIn profile and did the same. So on the left, you can see my profile as it was of last week. The first thing that you'll notice is well-being teams and registered manager. I don't say anything about my interest in self-management and health and care. And what jumps out is University of Chester, holacracy practitioner and where I live. So yesterday, well, last week, I spent a few minutes changing that. So it still feels really important to me to have founder of well-being teams. But I included and exploring self-management in health and care, which, as you know, is my focus. So making my focus really, really explicit. And then in the, the, the first few words of my bio, I included I'm um, exploring self-management in health and care. And I'm doing that in practice through well-being teams. And of course, you can add hashtags on your LinkedIn profiles, too. So what I recommend you consider is spending a few minutes reviewing your Twitter, Twitter profile and your LinkedIn profile or whatever profile you're using um, around social media. So the next thing to explore in week two is how we make this a new habit. And I want to introduce you to the notion of habit stacking. So in the first webinar we did, we talked about Simon Terry's phrase, which is wall around the clock. And the way that he focuses on working out loud is he does it um, after his first cup, cup of coffee in the morning, um, over at lunchtime and just before he clocks off in the day. Get rid of that. Um, and that's what he describes as working out loud around the clock. So one of the ways that you can do this is from the work of James Clear and his book Atomic Habits. And he talks about habit stacking and making a declaration or stating an intent. So choosing a current habit that you have. And Simon's is his morning cup of coffee, um, having his lunch and clearing his desk before he goes leaves for, from work. So choosing something to attach or stack your new habit of looking at Twitter or looking at LinkedIn and seeing who the people you're following, um, what they're tweeting about and retweeting them or engaging in conversation. So he gives some examples here. So meditation, pouring out his cup of coffee each morning after he's done that, he'll meditate for a minute. Or an example of exercise, when you take off your work shoes, immediately change into workout clothes. And he gives other examples of gratitude and marriage and um, safety. So I would like to suggest that you choose a current habit that you want to stack your new habit of looking at social media for five minutes a day or even 10 minutes a day so that you can start to embed this as a new habit and then declaring that or telling people what your intention is on um, our Slack group. This is one of the ways that I try and keep on track with my intention. So this is a screenshot of my um, homepage on my phone. 
And as you'll see, one of the apps I've got is called Impact Daily. And that's a free app that you can download from the App Store. And what that enables you to do is set a number of questions to ask yourself at the end of it each day. So one of the questions I'm asking myself is, um, did I do my best? So it's stated in the affirmative, I did my best today to connect and share out loud on Twitter about self-management for 10 minutes. And that's my intention. And it enables you to set that as a goal and for how many days you want to do it. And then you can also go into the settings column, which enables um, the app to notify you and you can set a time. So at five o'clock every day, I get a ping from this app asking me to fill in my question that asks me whether I did my best to connect and share out loud on Twitter about self-management for 10 minutes. And I can say yes or no. So it's a bit like an electronic accountability buddy that nudges you every day to ask you whether you've done what you intend to do. So in small groups today, I would like to ask you just to spend 10 minutes reflecting on your focus and where you're up to with that uh, for a few minutes. And then to get started on this week's tasks. Now, as it will take me two or three minutes to assign you to your groups, I'd like to suggest that you use that minute, those few minutes to think about the hashtag that you want to use in relation to your focus. Um, and then you can get started on the task, which is thinking about um, your hashtags, thinking about which platforms you want to be on, and if you've got a few minutes to actually change your bios as well, or think about how you want to change your bios. Then have a chat with your colleagues about that for 15 minutes, and to be really clear about what you intend to do the next week. So thinking about this as a habit, and whether you're going to stack your habits. Now these are only suggestions. Do what ever makes sense to you in your small groups. But I do recommend that you um, continue to have somebody who acts as the role of facilitator and somebody who acts in the role as timekeeper. And I will invite you back to our group, um, our main group, after 40 minutes. So now that you've spent time in your groups, I want to say a big uh, thank you to Simon, who's creating a document that enables you to put in your Twitter handle, your LinkedIn handle, Instagram if you're using it, Facebook if you're using it, blog if you have one, and email. So that's a really easy way for us to stay in touch if you'd like to do that. So thanks again to Simon for doing that. Simon, if you could post in general the link to that so people could find it really easily again, that would be so helpful, but thank you for that. And I posted our video from last week on the Working Out Loud groups on Facebook and on LinkedIn. And John Stepper got in touch to tell me that Working Out Loud as a hashtag and the phrase Working Out Loud is actually trademarked to him. And he requested that we didn't use it. So um, please don't use Working Out Loud as a hashtag on Twitter on, or on LinkedIn, unless you're specifically using John's processes and the Working Out Loud circle um, for 12 weeks and I wasn't aware um, that these were trademarked when we started this um, and I'd like to explore with you a potential alternative to using working out loud for that so I'll set up a new group I don't want this to be a distraction from our work at all but if you're interested in exploring alternative words for this come and join me on the new group and we'll see what we come up with and post it um, to the group next week and perhaps share it on week three but as I said, don't let this get in the way of our work at all or be on a, a distraction. The most important thing is we've got a focus. We're connecting with people who share our focus. We're showing up with appreciation and gratitude and connecting with people in new ways. And that's the focus of our work together and showing up and sharing our work. So we'll explore a little bit more about that on a separate group on Slack and share about it next week. So good luck with your practice this week. Please come over and by Friday post in next week I will and share your intention and I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you.